Well, I, I want to give the audience enough of what they're familiar with and at the same time give them something that, what they're not familiar with and they're going to be surprised by. And to a degree, I know what it is that they like about the first one, so that makes my job easier on the second one. Um, but I have to keep myself entertained and I see myself as an audience member. So I feel as though if I'm entertained, then the audience will be entertained. Filmmaking uh, is not, as people like to tell me, um, like coal mining, right, in the sense that it's not as gruelling, but sometimes I'd beg to differ because they are long hours. You do get paid well, but the hours are long um, and flight after flight catches up with you um, and it's a schedule and you have limitations and you have uh, a budget and there are all sorts of limitations and somehow you have to make sure that you can maximize on what it is that you've got. Needless to say, that means they take you up to the point of physical breaking point because that's where the most amount of profit is. So, um, you know, it does, it does grind you down um, and there's only so long you can work that hard for. Well, there's, there's, I, I have a, a, another crew that shoots, goes around for shooting stunts. So what will happen is, is that if I need an element of a waterfall, there will be a crew that go off and shoot an element of a waterfall. So that crew uh, went to many more countries than I. We, we really were based in uh, England, uh, England and Strasbourg. Those are the only two countries that we went to. Uh, Naomi, we'd just seen a girl with a dragon tattoo, and she was kind of conspicuously uh, attractive as an actress in that. So I wanted to get my hands on, uh, hands on her in that respect. Uh, we needed a strong female character, because uh, it wasn't going to be conspicuously uh, romantic. So what we needed was a, a, character to, a female character to drive that through and to make it worth it. So Naomi just seemed perfect and organic for that. Well, uh, Moriarty is arguably the most infamous character and uh, uh, the most in infamous villain in uh, literature. So to write, to, the challenge of representing that is tricky. Uh, the great thing about Jared is he, he doesn't, you, you don't, you, people don't really know him in a sort of, in a broad sense. So there wasn't any junk in the trunk in that respect. But it was also he's very intellectual and he's very capable. So... You know, within about 30 seconds of meeting Jared, I was pretty sure that he was, he was going to be the Moriarty. The nature of Sherlock Holmes and, and Watson is um, episodic by its creation. And my feeling is, is that if Conan Doyle was still around, he'd be writing screenplays. And uh, essentially, that's what, what he did. He did the 19th century version of that. And it was very cinematic and Bond-esque. I always felt his vision. Hence, when it got presented to me, it was, uh, was a no-brainer for me to get my head around it.